Let's now wrap up this part of the chapter on thin lenses by discussing how you could find the image formed by a refracting surface and the corresponding focal length. The idea is to say that the lenses that we've studied are either biconvex or biconcave, but those are not the only types of lenses that you could encounter. You could find a lens that is convex on one side and concave on the other, for example. And then the question is, how would you go about finding the focal length and then predicting where the image forms? So the idea is to consider an object here that emits light that is going to hit a surface of this medium with index of refraction n2 and a radius r. And as it shines through this spherical surface, it eventually forms an image somewhere here. And we like to be able to predict where that image forms and eventually also be able to predict what the focal length of the surface is going to be. So there's a relationship between P, Q, N1, N2, and the radius R. And so we're going to go over that. We're not going to derive it. We're just going to give it. And then we're going to talk about when R is positive or negative because that's going to be important for the next video where we're going to go over LensMaker's formula. So the relationship between all of these quantities is that N1 divided by P plus N2 divided by Q is equal to N2 minus N1 divided by R. And again, we're not deriving this relationship. The point is to know that there actually is a relationship between all of these quantities. What we need to discuss here before we look at LensMaker's formula is the sign convention for R. So a few things here. First of all, an image that forms on the side of a refracting surface that is opposite the object is a real image. So there's that. Typically the case of a converging lens. You put an object in front of it, light goes through, the image forms on the other side where light actually intersects, that's a real image. Now if the image forms on the same side, of a refracting surface as the object, then is virtual. Again, think of a diverging lens. Put the object in front, it will always produce an upright, reduced, virtual image in front of the lens. So that explains real image versus virtual image. Now, if an object faces a convex refracting surface, then the radius of that surface, or the radius of curvature, if you will, is counted positive, whereas if the object faces a concave refracting surface, then the radius is counted negative. And we're going to see in the next video how that has an effect on LensMaker's formula. Thanks for watching this video. At Congress Academy, we create custom study guides so that you don't have to. Send us your syllabus and some old exams, and we'll put together lecture notes, practice problems with step-by-step -step solutions, and classic exam questions so that you don't waste your time. All you have to do is log in and focus on studying what matters most. And if you have questions, we're available to help. If you'd like to learn more about how Congress Academy can help you do well, check us out at congressacademy.com. We look forward to helping you. See you there.